Perhaps above all else, video games are escapism. A portal into another world where you can explore stunning new worlds and maybe blow off some steam by committing digital mass murder. While the overwhelming majority of video games don't invite players to really feel anything for NPCs and bosses they slaughter, beyond exhilaration at least, every so often a game will dare to guilt you for your bloodletting. These 10 games all instructed players to kill in order to progress, with only a few offering optional non-lethal alternatives, only to turn around and emotionally lambast them for doing what they were asked. Whether it had to be done or not, these games all left players feeling like actual human garbage for committing murder with extreme prejudice, all in the quest to eventually reach that coveted end credit screen. Was it worth it? Probably. But that doesn't mean that your soul wasn't left aching at having to put down these enemies who, let's be honest, mostly didn't ask for it, let alone deserve it. I am Kirsten from What Culture Gaming, and these are 10 video game enemies you felt really bad for killing. Number 10, Any of the Colossi, Shadow of the Colossus. Shadow of the Colossus quests players with venturing across a mysterious land and vanquishing 16 gigantic powerful creatures in order to resurrect protagonist Wonder's fallen love, Mono. But for the most part, the Colossi don't actually instigate the fights against the player, instead acting passive until you wander into their home and start causing trouble. Throughout the game, there's a haunting, mournful tenor to killing these gorgeous, untamed beasts, which is massively exacerbated at the end when you learn that you've actually been killing them to help release the shadowy entity Dormin from his captivity. If you didn't feel bad for felling these creatures beforehand, you surely felt like murderous human garbage once the truth was revealed. It's no less heartrending on repeat playthroughs, for as sublimely beautiful as Shadow of the Colossus unmistakably is, progressing through it is intensely bittersweet. Number 9, Tahir Javan, Grand Theft Auto 5. You may not remember the name Tahir Javan, but you'll certainly remember Grand Theft Auto V's highly controversial mission by the book, in which protagonists Trevor and Michael work with FIB douchebag Steve Haynes to locate and assassinate the poor guy. The bulk of the mission sees players as Trevor, interrogating and torturing a man, Ferdinand Kerimov, to discern the identity of Javan, who the FIB has deduced is a terrorist threat. At the conclusion of the lengthy torture sesh, you're given control of Michael and tasked with sniping Javan in order to complete the mission. If the whole setup already seems pretty fishy, this is confirmed afterwards when various newspapers and radio reports refer to Javan as a good-hearted philanthropist and community leader. Even with the GTA series effectively being a demented playground for all of us to live out our most effed up fantasies, taking out such a seemingly benevolent guy as part of a government murder squad felt like a whole other level of wrong. Number 8, Toriel, Undertale. Early on in Undertale, players are saved from the evil Flowey by the motherly goat monster Toriel, who subsequently advises them to find non-violent solutions to encounters if possible. Even so, many players didn't quite know what they were getting into when Toriel then challenged them to a test of strength. Devastatingly, those who actually decide to fight Toriel rather than spare her, likely under the belief that she's in control of the fight, will ultimately end up killing her. Many first-time players who weren't familiar with the game's tone and mechanics were left feeling completely despondent, enough that some simply started the game from scratch to assuage their guilt. Hilariously though, players who exit and start the game again will find themselves mocked by Flowey, who knows exactly what they did. Number 7, Joseph Clarence, Hitman, Blood Money. The Hitman franchise generally makes a point of having you kill unambiguously awful people who are certainly worthy of death, though there are a few exceptions. Hitman Blood Money's first level sees Agent 47 tasked with assassinating Joseph Clarence, an amusement park honcho whose negligence caused a malfunctioning ride which killed 36 people. A horrible crime for sure, but the mission does a surprisingly comprehensive job of making Clarence a pitiable figure. He lost his business and fortune, his wife left him, and in desperation, he ends up loading the park out to drug dealers who eventually double-cross him. As Agent 47, you're sent to kill him by a parent of one of the accident's victims, who also requests you show Clarence a picture of their son before executing him. By this point, Clarence is a sobbing, sorrowful wreck on the floor, and as cool as the Hitman games are, nothing felt good about this at all. Number 6, Big Daddies, Bioshock. Bioshock is an incredible game for many reasons, not least that it dares offer up an enemy who is both enormously fun to fight and sure to leave you feeling like pure human garbage as you stand over their lifeless corpse. We're talking, of course, about the Big Daddies, the instantly iconic hybrid of a man in steampunk diving suit who are conditioned to protect the little sisters littered throughout Rapture. For the most part, players are actually given the option to instigate a fight with the Big Daddies or not, and taking them on will allow you to harvest the ever-useful Adam from the little sisters. But what 
Watching the big daddies protect the little sisters so aggressively in combat, especially against splicers, is bizarrely touching. And so, even if you do ultimately take a few down throughout the game in order to make your own life easier, you'll probably feel pretty bad about it. Number 5. Sybil Bennett, Silent Hill Depending on how well your playthrough of Silent Hill goes, and let's be honest, your first one is probably going to be pretty sloppy, you'll most likely end up having to kill your cop pal, Sybil Bennett, near the end of the game. Sybil ends up possessed by a supernatural parasite, causing her to start firing her gun at protagonist Harry. If players haven't obtained the red liquid by this point, they'll have no choice but to gun her down. If that isn't bad enough, given that Sybil's one of the game's few truly likeable characters, you then have to watch a grisly FMV where her face leaks blood until she dies. Eyes. Lovely. Granted, most players didn't have much of a choice here, but that still didn't make it any less upsetting to carry out. Number 4. The Fergus slash Wyatt Prototype Wolfenstein The New Order Though most people don't typically associate the Wolfenstein franchise with feelings like regret, The New Order did a fantastic job of making players feel the pain of killing one particular enemy. At the start of the game, you're captured by antagonist Wilhelm Strass and forced to choose which of your two comrades will have their brain forcefully sucked out and bottled up, Fergus or Wyatt. Whoever you choose for death, you'll end up facing off against them at the end of the game, with their brain having been replaced inside a gigantic, murderous robot prototype. Yep. Though the terror of fighting a giant machine man speaks for itself, it's tough to deny the sadness of fighting a creature that, deep down, is your former pal. It's not a particularly long or challenging fight, but having to defeat your old squad mate and then watch a cutscene where he apologises for attacking you, after which you destroy his brain in order to free him, is unexpectedly soul-wrenching. Number 3. Jen. Prey. The original 2006 Prey may not be a great game, but it does nevertheless boast one of the most memorably upsetting boss fights for the last two decades. Protagonist Tommy spends the early chunk of the game seeking out his girlfriend Jen, who, like him, has been abducted by aliens. But things take a tragic turn when he finally finds her, only to discover that her body has been fused with that of an alien creature. A boss fight ensues with which Tommy is forced to destroy the monster and in turn mortally wound Jen. At the end of the battle, a dying Jen begs the player to kill her, which they have to do in order to continue. The only small solace, however, is that the game makes it incredibly clear the afterlife is a concept in this world, and at the end, Jen is seen together with Tommy's grandpa in the afterlife. Phew. So, as horrifying an outcome as Jen's death was, at least she became more than just worm food. Number 2. Sif – Dark Souls if you didn't feel even the faintest flicker of emotion while taking down Dark Souls Sif, the Great Grey Wolf, you might want to talk to a professional. For starters, Sif is one of the most unique and straight-up awesome-looking bosses in the entire series, a colossal wolf which holds its dead partner's gigantic sword in its mouth. Despite doing nothing more than guarding the tomb of its dead pal, Sif is a mandatory boss who must be killed in order to obtain the Covenant of Artorius. To make matters even more unpleasant, players who whittle Sif's health down will eventually be met by the sight of the poor creature limping and whining before you finish them off. And that's not even the end of the story. Dark Souls DLC throws players a few hundred years back in time when they're able to encounter and fight alongside a younger Sif, further underlying just how awesome they were, and how terrible it was that you had to kill them. On the off chance that you end up playing the DLC before fighting Sif, Sif will even acknowledge your prior friendship in the later boss fight, while still insisting that their partner's grave must be protected. From Software aren't exactly known for getting the tear ducts flowing, but this… this was brutal. Prepare to die edition? More like prepare to cry edition. <laughs> Number 1. Most Human Enemies – The Last of Us Part 2 the brilliant paradox of The Last of Us Part 2 is that it's such a mechanically sublime video game from a gameplay perspective, and yet it also is such a thoroughly miserable experience which actively critiques the meaning behind that oh-so-brilliant gameplay. Most of your encounters with human characters throughout the game are deeply unpleasant, and performing a kill rarely qualifies as satisfying, let alone fun. There are certainly characters you encounter throughout the game who have gravely wronged either Ellie or Abby, but from start to finish, taking a life in this game feels horrible. Killing is basically designed to be as stomach-churningly off-putting as possible. NPCs let out long, blood-curdling screams as they pass on, and you'll often hear their comrades, their friends even, fearfully call their names after you've slaughtered them. It makes for a uniquely upsetting experience and ensures players feel the full, visceral extent of their actions. Given that Naughty Dog has been wildly criticised in the past for committing the sin of ludonarrative dissonance, with the Uncharted games pitting their breezy, charming story against slaughter-heavy gameplay, it's fitting that their latest masterpiece addressed it head-on.
And there you go, the 10 video game enemies you felt really bad for killing. But let us know what your thoughts are down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button as well as the little notification bell to be notified of any new videos coming your way. But for now, I have been Kirsten Rhea from What Culture Gaming, and I'll see you in the next video.